Looking at the number of diplomats serving in the Foreign Office and the budget allocations provided to the Foreign Office, I can safely say that Pakistani diplomacy often punches above its weight. This legacy has to be carried forward, evolved, and made even more productive. We can do this only by maintaining the spirit while adding to the substance and changing and evolving to meet contemporary requirements. Dear probationers, you are entering the world of diplomacy at the moment of great ferment. The world is in a state of flux. The only certainty is that there is no certainty. What was a given yesterday cannot be taken for granted today. The cycle of history is coming full circle. The old world, the world of the 20th century, is perhaps unwinding and giving way to a new era with new opportunities and new threats. As you enter the service, you will be required to navigate the geopolitical rapids, safeguard and advance national interests in a countless different ways, and tackle the emerging challenges. This is a heavy brief. Never take your responsibilities and the expectations that the nation and the institution has of you lightly. Ladies and gentlemen, as Foreign Minister, capacity building, including through the Foreign Service Academy, has been among my foremost priorities. Thanks to our Chinese friends, I'm happy that we are able to secure, that we were able to secure for you this premises, offering far greater possibilities for intellectual pursuits, cultural activities, and maintaining physical fitness. I compliment the administration of the Ministry for diligently upgrading the premises and making it usable. More is in the offing. What I have in mind for this academy is yet not visible. But one day, if you keep on pursuing my dream, I think this will become the state-of-the-art institution, an institution that you will all be proud of one day, inshallah. This is just the beginning. We've just made a start. We have a long way to go. It's also a matter of satisfaction that the curriculum has been upgraded in line with modern requirements. Review, reform, and renewal must be a continuous process. We must imbibe the lessons, internalize them, and course correct as a matter of habit, as second nature. Dear probationers, I have a vision for the Foreign Office, a vision for you as the leaders and torch bearers of tomorrow. Vision FO seeks to upgrade the toolkit of our diplomacy, adopt digital technologies, modern means, and tools of communication and networking to achieve goals more efficiently and effectively. Under Vision FO, a series of reforms have been instituted. The Foreign Office is today open to inputs for policy formulation.
when we're interacting with civil society, with academia, with think tanks, and trying to open up the Foreign Office to get a fresh perspective. Foreign policy itself is diversifying and pivoting to areas and issues that bring tangible benefits to the common man. Public and economic diplomacy are being mainstreamed. It is sometimes said in a lighter vein that a diplomat is someone who thinks twice before saying nothing. I do not want you to be such diplomats. In fact, I want our diplomats to be articulate, effective team members who think outside the box in order to find solutions and deliver results. However, when you do speak, it must reflect wisdom and intellect rather than emotions. At the institutional level, the Foreign Office is now speaking differently and with great effect or greater effect. All the institutions at the institutions level the Foreign Office is now speaking, you know, the language that is required for today. And we have to improvise. We have to see where the world is going and we have to adapt. I am not against traditions. I believe in traditions and traditions must be uh, upheld, but innovation is equally important. In addition to words, we are employing images, graphics, and, I and videos to better communicate with a wider array of audiences. Specialized cells and divisions, namely the Strategic Communication Division, the Kashmir Cell, and the Crisis Management Cell are now operational. For these cells and divisions to deliver effectively for the Foreign Office to deliver effectively, continuous training and capacity building are vital. And this is where the Foreign Service Academy must play its role. Dear probationers, it should be remembered that the performance of the Foreign Ministry depends on your collective efforts. As General Douglas MacArthur, once said, a general is as good or just as bad as the troops under his command. If the foreign ministry does well, it would be because of the competence of its officers. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like our young diplomats to remember what the father of the nation, Qayyad Azam Muhammad Ali Jannah, it said regarding foreign policy of Pakistan. He had observed, and I quote, our object should be peace within and peace without. We want to live peacefully and maintain cordial and friendly relations with our immediate neighbors and with the world at large. We have no aggressive designs against anyone. We stand by the United Nations Charter and will gladly make our full contribution to the peace and prosperity of the world. Well, uh, before I close my remarks, I wish you all the best. You know, you're beginning a new career. It will be interesting. It will be challenging. At times, you'll be very frustrated as well. But that's life. You know, you have to, you have to slog, you have to improvise, and you have to dream. Do not stop dreaming. You know, uh, if you want to achieve uh, a position uh, or if you want to attain something in life, you have to be a dreamer. So I want you to dream. Dream for Pakistan. Dream for your for yourself, for your future.
you know, uh, your families are here, your parents are here. They have expectations. And you've come through a competitive examination. You should have the confidence that you're here because of your ability, not because of some political safarish. The country needs you. One of our challenges today is governance, poor governance. And I'm a firm believer we cannot give good governance to Pakistan until we have a good civil service. Political leaders can give you ideas. They can um, formulate policy. But you are the governors. You have to implement. And if those policies cannot be implemented, you know, there's no point in having new policies or, or new direction. So you're the key. You're the key to our future. You're the key to Pakistan's diplomacy. And Pakistan is changing. Pakistan ought to change. We have to learn from the mistakes we have made. You know, uh, and this institution has to grow. This institution has to grow and stand on its feet. Obviously, you know, in, in, in a world where, you know, in this interconnected world, uh, you need input. You need input from all stakeholders. But hold your ground. Foreign policy has to be led by foreign officers. Invite, invitation, invite uh, input from everywhere. But make up your minds. Because you will lead. You're not followers. You're leaders. Let the Foreign Office lead the foreign policy of Pakistan and not follow instructions. I want a Foreign Office with that confidence, an institution that is strong enough to give the leadership that the nation requires. You have the potential. You have the capability. Go for it. Good luck.